Guys, before we start, if you want to listen to the audio only version, you're trying to drive, you're trying to fall asleep, it's in the description, it's on Spotify, Apple, anywhere else that you stream podcasts. And if you are listening on Spotify or Apple and you want to watch the video version of us being super hot and glamorous and stunning, you can go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Trevi Moran for the full video version. Hi, I'm Trevi. And I'm Kate. And welcome back to Six, Six Feet Above. Above. We're getting We're there. like so there. <laughs> so the, No, we're close. The branding is just like starting to blossom. It's and become, monumental at the end of the day. Yeah, it is. Wait, how many fingernails you got today? Zero. And for those that can't see, I literally lost a thumbnail. Did you see that comment? <laughs> okay, someone commented on our last YouTube video and we're like... Can Kate put an ounce of effort in? Like, look at those nails. And I was like, all right. Like, I ask you that because I know you read every single one just like I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, so, you know what, guys? If you want to comment, just know we will read them. And, like, is it a crime to have a few nails on? For sure. Right. <laughs> in this but, city? But it doesn't. It's a separate. It's a separate ideology. Like, you put in copious amounts of efforts in more ways than I could imagine. Thank you. So to whoever wrote that, you really, you made my girl rip all her nails off. Literally. And now she's nary, naked. nary a thumbnail. Nary a thumbnail. No, because how was your literal New Year's? I'm having like a little problem. Tell me. Um, let's just, I guess, like, I'm trying to think if we should just do off my chest. Because. Okay, let's do it. This is technically just like my off my chest. You have one. I do. But it's like the same in a different font. Period. <laughs> um, we have the same problems. Like Rome wasn't bad. I dead. exactly, exactly. Okay, so I've just been like ever since the New Year struck, I haven't really been like motivated to get up. Mm, tell me more. Nobody wants to work these days. They really don't. Like out I, of bed or out of the house. Out like, of the you... house. Like I haven't. Like I there was a party we were supposed to go to last night. I was shocked you canceled. Yeah. One thing about you, you love a party. Yeah. Well, and it was Golden Globes after party. I was aghast. I know. Obviously, I'm I was so... down to not go. Yeah. Always. Well, always. <laughs> like, you never have to feel um, bad about canceling on me. But, like, even for this today, like, it took so much effort for me, like, in the shower and, like, shave my everything and, like, do my glam and, like, have my hair done. Like, it was a lot. Like, I started getting ready today at 3.30. Mm. And we just started. It's 7 p.m. Like, that's a lot. Great time management, though. We did great. We did great. But um, I've just been having trouble with, um, like, getting up. And I really was this close to not doing anything on New Year's Eve. I was going to, like, bake cookies by myself. Yeah. And, like, watch a movie. And I'm like, okay, as, like, really cute and wholesome as that sounds, like, that's honestly going to make me, like, more sad. Yeah, I can't um, see that for you. I, I can't either. So... One of my friends like verbally abused me until I put on a dress and some concealer, I and um, I ended up at a college party. Excuse and when me. I tell you, the six feet above girlies were there. T tall girls were there? No, just people who listen to our podcast. Oh my god! But yeah, there are a lot. A l I and here's what I no normally started. Hello, this is what I've started to realize. When I would get noticed, like back in the day, like five, six years ago. They would all be like teenagers, like full, like like middle of teenagers, like 14, 16, 13 years old. And here we are like later in life. And all those same girls are like either in college or with full on up. jobs. And now when these people come up to me, they're like in their 20s. And I'm like, oh, huh. y'all grew up. They really did. I just thought they'd stay young forever. <sighs> That's so interesting. That's what I thought this morning. Then I saw a wrinkle. Stop, nary a wrinkle. Nary a wrinkle. But yeah, it was cute. It was a very college-y, very, like, not my scene, but it was cute to get out of the house. What were the men like? Youthful? Youthful? No. Youthful. <laughs> nary a use. Youthful. <laughs> Don't care. Nary a use. <laughs> too, too youthful, if I'm being honest. Yeah. So it was cute, but, I mean, I got out of the house. I got home, like, at 2 on New Year's Eve, which is early for me on New Year's Eve. Like, yeah. I was expecting me to be at, like, the afters. Uh-huh. Nope. Wait, so why do you think you're having trouble with motivation? I think I'm really, like, it's the weather for sure. I, mm -hmm. I like, it reminds me of New York, and oh I'm, like, really depressed How again. did we survive? How did we survive? I do not know. Nary like, a survival tactic. Nary a clue, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just don't, I don't really, um, I don't like it. It reminds me of New York. It's gray and it's really fucking cold right now. Like, yes, it gives me an excuse to wear a cunt coat draped over my shoulders. Love of hope. Yes. And, you know? Yeah. So, um, I'm working on it. I'm trying to force myself. A lot of anxiety. Like, I can't drink caffeine right now. I haven't had caffeine in like a week. You don't have your week. Celsius today? mm I have one on the way here. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so maybe I just, I just get in these like little weird moments, but I, I snap out of them. And that's okay. Yeah. Anywho. Anyway, so that's my off my chest. I just haven't really been uh, too motivated. And uh, okay. I'll, I'll get out of it. But it, it was an average New Year's. Didn't stay inside. I baked the cookies the next day. Thank God. And that's all I can ask for. Yeah, my New Year's was I went to bed at 10, which oh, for me was amazing. R- right. Watching Drake and Josh. Uh-huh. Um, are you familiar with the show? For sure. But for my off my chest, so as you know, I'm like in my celibate era. Still. And, still. We haven't and, asked anyone. Uh, no. And like when I tell you, I talked about how my sex drive is super low. It's like beneath Earth's crust. No. Similar to the Benoit? bar. Benoit? Like... But it's so weird because I've been feeling this sense of freedom lately. And I'm not, like, blaming men for this. Like, everyone relax. Shut up! But, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I think I'm going to go celibate for a year. Oh. Oh, that's not. Oh, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> and... Then who's going to f*** your p***, <laughs> Kate Laurentios? No one. And let me tell you why I love that for me. Because I've noticed in these past few weeks of celibacy, it's been, like, three days. No, it's been, like, two weeks. Um, it's like, wow, I'm not trying to impress a single man. Like, I don't care about like, who's going to impress you. (laughs) Okay, stop. (laughs) Like, I don't care about like posting something and a man being like, oh, she's weird. She's cringe or like what I'm wearing or like, I've been having like, I've been feeling really good about my body too. I'm like, wait, like, no, I'm really living for me this year and I'm so excited and it's only the beginning. Right. I'm I'm really happy that you're, you're figuring this out you do have and feel feel free to (laughs) oh god (laughs) feel free to cut this out you do you are dealing with some like some like deeper like issues regarding men in the opposite sense that i am like i'm out here still romanticizing and you're out here like Where's the carpet? I need to munch. Trevi literally called me out the other day because you were like talking about. I'm just like, what? What's the hostility? Well, you were talking about a guy, and you're just like, you're like, yeah, I'm talking to him. He's doing this, and I'm like, yeah, well, you better look out because he's out to get you. And then I was like, whoa, let me chill out. And you were like, Kate, like, are you good? And I was like, no. I, I was like, what is with this hostility? I, I'm working. We're through on a different. Lot. I get it, and I and I and I respect you, but it's like we have male listeners as well. I know, no, and that's the thing. I really don't hate all men. Like I just need to stop projecting my bad experiences on all of them. Right. So I guess I do hate all of them, but I'm working on not hating all of them. Okay. Because I know there are good men out there. You said in the last episode, <laughs> name a good man. <laughs> and I go. Uh, <laughs> Now you're just lying. Listen, no, I am or, lying. Yeah. Um, no, but I'm I'm open to healing. So that's what I'm going to do this year. And I can't <laughs> Me heal. Me in Peru drinking <laughs> ayahuasca. Well, I'm open, to- I'm open to healing. But I just think I can't heal my relationship with men if I'm dating them. So that's why I need a year of celibacy. Okay. To like really. I think a year is like. Like you might Two go years? a little stir. Whoa. Oh. Oh, I mean, you're saying less. I was thinking like, like just let's just start off like. With like it, three months. What if you do meet someone on the street? Who? <laughs> I don't know. We maybe, start fighting. Maybe you're you going for a run. Line will work. <sighs> it, whatever happens, happens. Because then if it, if you break it, you're going to get so fucking hard on yourself. A year of no d- is crazy. I love your optimism that I'm going to meet someone cute. And I love that. And I want to hold on to that. I strongly disagree. Okay. But again, I'm going to take that into consideration. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm speaking like I'm in HR. What the fuck is this? Sincerely, Kate, I'm CC'd management. Like, what the fuck is going on? Okay, can we move on? Yeah. Because literally, ha- I miss your poncho. <laughs> My poncho? I miss your poncho, and I want to let the people know what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> I am not poncho. I'm not glitter poncho I anymore. I can't believe the woman I'm looking at. Really? Like the style, like <laughs> the makeup. It's just so different than when I first met Trevi at the Sober Living. Okay. Take it away. 
<laughs> okay, so for those of you wondering, what the f- poncho and glitter and poncho? So basically, Kate and I have this saying that the old version of me, we named her glitter and poncho. So in my first year of sobriety, um, and in most people's first year of sobriety, you gain some weight. Mm. Um, so I wasn't very comfortable with wearing crop tops. I wasn't very comfortable with wearing like tight things. I was I also it. like, I just switched my dose of my hormones, I remember, and it was like a crazy dose upage so like my appetite was insane oh i didn't know that my boobs were coming in like nothing like i had like fit me but my mom was like shopping online for me and i was like telling her like my issues with my body and like all this stuff and she like i'm not laughing I'm no, not- no it's <laughs> fine you can laugh it's so important so what it was basically glitter poncho court <laughs> <laughs> is me wearing this <laughs> Long sleeve. There, I had like five different colors of the yeah. same poncho I had. I was like, gray, wow. black, white. It was a waffle material. It was like this waffle material with three buttons in it, but it was like super drapey at the bottom. Yeah. So like, I felt like comfortable. I didn't. <laughs> it's not like, oh my god, I'm not laughing at you. <laughs> and what I I didn't know how to blow out my hair. I didn't know how to do. <laughs> anything. You were learning. So I would just like side part my hair. Run water through it. <laughs> I didn't know that. No, listen, listen. <laughs> and then brush it so slick and then do a, a low pony. You loved a low pony. And like the little curlies were sticking out. And then mm-hmm. I just, I do like really high coverage foundation. Mm-hmm. I do a really pigmented lip gloss. And for eyeshadow, <laughs> I just did glitter. <laughs> but it was like this chunky glitter. Or like you would take your index fingers and just like scoop it. <laughs> it's like thing of glitter and just go like Because that. that's when like Euphoria season three or something yeah. was coming out. I was like, oh, You're this inspired. is so Euphoria. It's so hard to explain it, but this was not a, this was not just an outfit. It was a era. It, <laughs> it, it was, was a, like, it was every day a different colored poncho and then like glitter on her eyelids. And I was like, you know what? She's doing the damn thing. But I just like, I looked, st- like you could tell like I was still recovering from my addiction like I looked sad I was also you very were depre- so sad I was really depressed in like my third fourth month of sobriety like yeah it was it was really tough to watch mm-hmm. and you still would make me laugh like when I had to breathalyze you which right. we've never we've never talked, talked about, about that the breathalyzing literally Trevi would come downstairs in her poncho and I'd be like you ready to breathalyze this and she was like yeah and what would you do basically when you (laughs) blow into the breathalyzer it like tells you if you have alcohol in your system Mm -hmm. and they have to do that to us every morning and every night Mm -hmm. I believe or every yeah I think it's every morning and every night Yeah. and when Kate would do it I'd always pretend like like a number came up on the breathalyzer because it's when you're sober it's supposed to be 0.00 yeah but I would pretend I'd be like and then I'd look and I'd go and you would hide it from me, and, and you'd would, like, make a scared face. And I'd like, make this like, fu- and, like looking back, like, not funny at all. You, <laughs> you are like three months sober. You are pretending like you relapsed in front of someone who is managing the sober living. House. I would always die of laughter. But you would laugh. <laughs> like I did that on one of our other girls once, and she was not having it. No way. But I love that you were such a good sport with that. Oh my god, you it know? was so funny. I was like, you're so sad. Like all the time, and it was so fun to just like have this little joke with you because we would both laugh about it. And I was like, okay, this is cute. Okay, go back to being sad. Yeah, I was like, all right, go back upstairs. <laughs> I would take so many meds. Yeah, and you had really a lot of trouble swallowing pills. You remember that? Still do. Damn. I still have to split like a gabapentin in three, still to this day. You would take, uh, yeah, you would take a lot of meds. Honestly, truly, I was only ever happy when I would fly home to California to work or, like, see my friends. Like, it was just, like, yeah. there's this theory. I think it's called, or well, not even a theory. It's, like, it's just a belief that a lot of, like, spiritual people believe, but it's called astrocartography. Okay. And it basically is the theory that where you were born, like, the time, date, place, like, your ast- astrological whatever it was in space has a parallel existence on Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, so exactly where the planet was when you were born, like, it places you at a certain where on the map. And it's like wherever, you can look up, you can type in online your, where you were born, date, time, and it would, like, show you this graph of, like, if there's, like, this line, and, and if it runs through the line, the specific location, that means that, like, your soul is like, um, or like your astrological sign is like aligned with that location. And I remember like none of it ran through the East Coast for me. 
Really? And it ran straight through California. And I'm just like through and through. So, you are so California. But it doesn't, it, like I did it with some other friends that were born in California. It doesn't even run right through California at all. So it wasn't just because I was born here. It's just like, I don't know. I just feel right and aligned and attuned here. Mm -hmm. Even though like sometimes like we all are human. Like I'm going through a little phase right now. But I know once yeah. it's sunny again, I'll be popping my pussy in the studio. It. I know that's right. So we'll have to look yours up and find out. It's probably here. It probably is. I'm yeah, so you're happy. Thriving. Here. Oh my god. New York was like really taking my soul away. I was you so You're my soul. Yeah. But yeah, I love it here. You do? Yeah. So did you you went to bed New Year's? What yeah, what about Christmas? How did you how was that? Oh. <laughs> well, family's a lot and um, yeah. we're not going to get into it. You know what? Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. Um yeah, I literally can't say anything without outing my family, but you okay. know what? We're not perfect. Your family's gay? Yeah. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> wow. All of them. Uh, Except for you, because no. you're trans. Correct. Right. Um, but, uh, the comment. <laughs> I just go, the comment, that? you know exactly <laughs> yeah. what I'm talking about. Someone, I love that some of the people are now like, oh, I actually don't love it. I actually feel kind of bad. Why? I don't know. Um, but someone commented, they go, wait. Is Kate really trans? Because we always mark? joke about... Okay, can we say how that joke... How did that joke even start? Start at the sober living. It started at the sober living. I. It was really ballsy of me to let out. It really was. Like... You were bold for that. I think I was like, oh my gosh, I have such bad period cramps. And you were like, liar. Or something <laughs> like that. I forget. Yeah, well, I, I cannot this confirm... This is crazy. I cannot confirm or deny the transsexualism that lies within Catherine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Lord. Mm, liar. So I wanted to talk about the worst jobs we've ever had. Never worked a day in my life. So, and that's where the problem Oh, lied. that's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no, no. Let me clarify before you continue. I haven't had a conventional desk job. Yeah, because you were a star. So let's talk about the worst, like, campaign you ever did. <sighs> you go first. Okay. I've been um, yapping. Okay. Uh, the worst job I've ever had was 100%. One summer, I was home going into my sophomore year of college, soif moi, and <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like, get a job. And I was like, okay. So I went down to the- Chris has wait. a job. No. <laughs> okay. It's my sister. Um, so I go down to the local turkey slicing place because that's the only place that's hiring. And I literally show up. I was like, hey, I need a job. And they're like, you're hired on the spot. And I was like, okay. So I show up and- they're like, yeah, so put these gloves on and you're just going to slice turkey for nine hours a day. And I was what? like, oh, and this guy was there. And I remember going into that job. I was still a virgin at the time. Oh. And I was like, oh, my God, I hope I meet a man. And then I, we like have for the first time. Don't find a man at a turkey slicing place. That's all I'm going to say. But this Do guy. You deli? I, I'm confused. It, it's it was exclusively still, it was a, turkey. It was a turkey farm. Okay. It was like they sell turkey and they sell like Boston cream pies. That's <laughs> it. That's a crazy and I, <laughs> combo. But they did well. They're like, and um, now revealing our turkey Boston no. cream donut. <laughs> I'm like, y'all are on nothing. Means. No, for real. Um, but it was awful. And like my first day, this guy was like, just know that this is going to be the worst job you've ever had. So any other job is going to be great. And I was like, oh. oh. Um, but anyways. I just remember this one time I was like carrying because I had to carry the forty pound turkeys and they were like covered in grease. Oh, you were dead dead ones or live ones? Dead ones, and they were like skinned or, in or the feathered or defeathered, uh, like defeathered, like plucked. Because we were about to slice them, mm. so I'm like carrying it out of the fridge and I drop the turkey on the ground and I'm like trying to pick it up and it's rolling in the dust and I start like crying and I'm like, oh my god, what do I do? <laughs> oh and then I go to my manager. I was like, the turkey is so dusty. I'm so sorry. Like, what do you want me to do? And she's like, just cut it. Who cares? And I was like. <laughs> and then my mom once came seasoning and, yeah mm. and i was like don't get the turkey but um so yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. were they like this this was just like like just plucked full-bodied turkeys yeah and i would slice them for the sandwiches i showed up drunk one day from the night before no like really wasted and i was like i'm still drunk from last night no idea why i said that to my boss because I, I thought like thought we were friends and then i almost got fired and she was like you do that again i'm letting you go and guess what Showed up hungover the next day. But um, right. you know what? It, it taught me a lot. And um, What did you do with the like organs and stuff? Like how did you – that probably f***ed you up. I know. I was a vegetarian. But I would eat the Boston cream pie in the fridge in the hopes that they would come in 
catch me and fire me. Like it was, what? it was not it. Um, oh, that's not. Oh, that's not. But you know what? <laughs> that was definitely the worst job I've ever had. And um, respect to those that work at a turkey farm. It's not easy. It's Yo. not an easy job. It's not an easy job. That's fucking brutal. It was tough, but honestly, it built a lot of character. Right. And I was just like, you know what? I don't want to work here my whole life. At all. But I met some cool people. Um, oh, I saw one like a summer later, a year later, this guy that I worked with the whole summer. And he was like, Claudia. Oh. And I was like, mm-mm. And then he told me about how his dog had diarrhea. And he was like, Claude, I'll see you later. And Claude. I was like, Claude. It's like, that's crazy. We sliced turkey together an entire summer. And you think my name's Claudia? <laughs> Nuts. Anyways, that's my experience. Wow. What about you? I'm, try- I'm trying to think of something. I wish we better. sliced turkey together. I, Anyways, go on. What? I wish we blacked out together. <laughs> no. What? The worst like thing work wise that I've ever done. I have like certain instances, but like when when I would tour with O2L back in the day, I we would be at these venues. We'd be at like the House of Blues of the world. So we'd be at like Terminal Five in New York, for instance. And you know how that's like a standing venue. I like, didn't. Okay, so, like, all these venues are, like, standing venues. So, like, rock venues. So, they're not, like, organized seats. They're, like, they give away, like, two, 3,000 tickets. And whoever buys them, you just got to kind of squeeze in. And um, I remember being, I was, like, 14, 15. We were on tour. And every show, it was, like, the most traumatizing thing to watch because everyone tried to push to the front. And you'd always have these girls in the front passing out. And there's what? like a thousand, two thousand people behind them, and there's like nothing I can do. Well, first of all, because I was a skinny little, well, yes, but I, <laughs> I was a skinny like fourteen, fifteen year old like, and if I went up to the crowd, like it would be even crazier. Was so, there like, security? Yes, and they. But here's the worst part: you'd have to like watch security like pick up these like, like, <gasps> like they were. Out and it was like I would always feel so bad because these venues would always have these problems with water and AC and like just organization of the people. So it was like every show, it was like so brutal for me to watch like girls getting picked up out of the audience from like passing out. Did and no, die? no one ever died. No, 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 we would know. Um, but it was just like obviously that's not on us, that's like no. on the tour organization and venue, like. But it's like it was just still brutal and awful to watch. But it was just like I feel like there's like concert etiquette as well. And like when you're a teenager, you don't really know that. Like all, all of our audience was was teenagers. I feel like now, I mean, even though like at Coachella or like festivals, people don't really have etiquette. It's like just pushing and shoving and trying to get it. to the front. And it and it's it's yeah, it's bad. It's so frustrating. Um, that's one instance, I guess. That's so crazy. It was just like real, like because like, they would be like unconscious. It was like really weird. Like first of all, I, I love really, the way you really say bad. tour, and second of all, I can't. I still like am always in awe that of that era in your life. Yeah, like, that's I'm, so crazy. I'm low key glad it's over because no one's passing out anymore. <sighs> Not yet. Uh, I know. Wait till the well, the arenas though that I'm going to be performing in. That's organized seating and our live shows. Oh my God! The six feet above live shows. I didn't know that was happening until now. It but will. if y'all keep it up, you yeah. know what? I have a challenge for all of you motherfuckers listening today. And I was thinking about this in my Uber the other day. All of you guys that are watching this, you are leaving the most insanely helpful, nice, and respectable comments. And you're saying that it's like truly like one of the first podcasts you guys have found in a while that you can laugh at and feel relaxed at. And it's like really like that. Like that was our whole goal this entire time so much. of bringing like this dark humor, but like sobriety aspect, but also just like we don't even have an organization. We just kind of can fart out of our ass and you guys love it. And I and I love that. Um, but I have a challenge. Um, don't gatekeep. Tell a friend. Tell oh, two yeah. friends. Drop a link. Share because we're trying. To I know work. y'all are gatekeeping. Because you don't want to see us skyrocket. And I understand that. No, because why are you haters? No, they're not. No, they're not. I just think it's a subconscious. I think it's a a subconscious thing, though, because like when I find a person or a song, I'm like, oh, I found it. It's mine. My challenge for you is like, text a friend, show a friend. We're really like, y'all are so appreciative of the comments. Like, I'm aghast every time I see them. They love us on Reddit, too. 
I'm like, what in the literal haywire? Because it really blows my mind, and I'm so appreciative. Yeah, I don't read Reddit, though. I just, I was sent it, and um, I know that that's a very toxic place, so don't think you can talk poopy about me, and I'll see it, because I won't. You can literally call me a dirty fat and I won't see it. Well. I'll read my YouTube comments, though. If you call me it there, I'll see it. Anything else? I mean, I was in YouTube Rewind once, and I was on set for 12 hours, and then they ended up putting me in for, like, two frames? I didn't get paid for it. What? I was on set for like 12 hours and it was like just brutal. I was like, why did, who, why did I agree to this? Yeah, and you got two seconds. Yeah, but it's fine. Oof. Glitter and Poncho Sheesh. would be so proud. No. Glitter and Poncho, she didn't really have much going for her though. She, she did. did. She, she did. did. She did. Glitter and Poncho, I, I hate to keep bringing her up. She's my favorite. I, <laughs> I think that she had so many aspirations and she wanted to be so many things, but... The thought of everything piling up in her mind, she kind of just, like, gave up. Yeah. And um, I slowly but surely started to deal with things one by one. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I look at those photos and I, like, look in the mirror and I'm like, what it truly looked like to me was an adult resuming their life. Like, because from 16 to 22 or whenever, I think I got sober at 22. And... Like that the year is 16 to 22, like I wasn't living and or growing. So mm-hmm. it's like, I, it just looked like someone who resumed their life finally. And like, yeah. I didn't know how to adult. I didn't know how to live. I didn't know how to do my own. Shit. I didn't know how to like take care of myself. And that's something in these past two and a half years that I literally had to relearn all over again. Yeah. No one talks about that with addiction, no. like your hygiene, your attitude, your laundry, like everything that is normally an easy thing to do becomes sorry a task yeah they like talk about our early sobriety is like you're in a car and you stop the car suddenly and all the stuff in the back goes to the front immediately and that's like (laughs) i love that and that's early sobriety you're like you stop the car and like all this shit comes forward and you're like oh my god i don't know how to do any of this and like what do i do and you're juggling all this stuff and you're like i don't know how to like brush my teeth and like eat cereal and like i don't know why those two things no it makes sense but you know what the easy easy solution that i always tell people is put on a poncho and throw some glitter on your eye i beg like that's <laughs> i beg that's really how you do i it. beg i beg well she will be a staple and i think she'll end up on R- mount rushmore i really agree she like, represents all of us she represents, we've all had a glitter and poncho we've era all had a glitter and poncho. <laughs> like even people that aren't sober yeah oh my god no because literally have you ever had someone that um has like a brother or sister and they like want to have sex with them <laughs> okay you I know what it. i'm talking I about i do i do i love oh i love this question um i do tell me the story okay i and i don't i i'm i am a girl's girl through and through but it's always these damn You're girls like, get a girl no but it's always these damn girls and they're always blonde and why do they want to fuck their brother so bad why are they like <laughs> grabbing their brother's dick in a picture like i'm so confused and they're like they're like sitting on their brother's lap in a bikini and they're like love my bro and i'm like oh my stop like what are you doing and they're like is that just uh, oh that's not (laughs) (laughs) well who's going to fuck your brother (laughs) okay what oh that's not (laughs) what happened with the blonde girl Wait, what do you mean what happened with... Are they always... I don't know... If oh, you're just like in general. I'm just in general. There's so many different examples of people that I know. And honestly, have you ever like seen like... Like it, it honestly happens to me with twins too. I'm like, y'all... I think mm-hmm. most twins... You know what? I'm like, i shut my mouth. <laughs> some twins have some sexual chemistry. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that. I'm gonna, it, it's like... I feel like if you're a twin, you have to have this insane level of closeness. Yeah. That like... Like I don't know, maybe I know some twins that hate hate each other. If I was if I had a clone, I'd probably have sex with my clone just hmm. to be like that was fun. Okay. But like then I would like never want to see it again. Okay. okay. But I I feel like I don't understand the closeness of twins because I am not one. Yeah. Um. So maybe it just seems as though I know some. Remember like the Island Boys? Are they hooking up? I think that they were like making out and doing shit for only. Lord. Yeah. yeah. I remember this one time I was talking to this girl about this exact topic. And I was like, it's so weird when they're like hugging each other and rubbing each other. And she was like, yeah, I mean, me and my brother cuddle, but like, that's it. And I was like, whoa. Oh, interesting. Or when people like, do you like kiss your dad on the mouth? 
No, that too. Or when they call. Well, no, let me stop. I uh, no. Say you, wait, you kiss your dad on the mouth. No. <laughs> you kiss your mother with that mouth. Um, I would literally rather shove a hammer in my mouth than <laughs> kiss my dad on the lips. You are finding these insane <laughs> things. Local foot. Local <laughs> hammer. No, that would be crazy. But I guess you know what? Who am I to judge on someone's closeness with someone? <laughs> the law is yeah. it literally illegal. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, wow, how'd we get here? That's crazy. <sighs> Anything else on that subject matter? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Can we talk about TikTok shop for a second? Oh my gosh. If I see eligible for commission one more time, it's I don't even like go on TikTok anymore. It's like everyone's selling the leggings, the light. The leggings gonna give me a camel toe. I already know it. The light, the f shut up. No, the hair curler, the wavy top. I'm, I don't even want to say the brand. I, I just like TikTok pushes it. Which is like yeah, I that's why everyone's get it, and that's but that's why everyone's doing it. So it's yeah. like I used to love to like just watch funny videos. I have to get through twenty of these to find one funny video. Yeah, and it's the same thing. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm not. There's all like yeah. I'm like, holy. Yo, First of all, that's up. just called a literal clip on light. Why are you guys branding it now as the Alex Earl light? I don't know. Like, what is this? I don't. I don't understand. It's just. It's. It's boggling my mind and then i thought of that and then i made a makeup video that wasn't eligible for commission and i like was naming products that i actually like i love and that. tiktok pushed it so maybe because we need more real authentic bitches. we do yeah. so i mean i guess i'm a beauty guru now you but you always have been and i've been wanting you to really put it out there you i should be more i want to be more of a beauty guru you're I mean, such a beauty guru like i mean not a beauty guru but i just want to like play with more makeup for content yeah. Cause you're so good at it. Thanks. And like, I'm just like, let's. Glitter and poncho wasn't. This is this is much different. Than you're glitter. elevating each day. Yeah. It's a new step up. And I used to like watching those chamoy pickle kits, but now I'm so over I'm it. I'm so over it. I'm like, it's the same thing. You're we should do a pickle. get ready with me before the podcast one day together. Oh my God, I'm so down. We should do it honestly for like a YouTube video. We could do a podcast episode of us getting ready. That's genius. Like we do like an at home edition or something. All right, Kate's Kate's got another banger for us. Kate, you're like the executive producer. I'm just here for the ride. Stop. <laughs> um. Okay. So I've been really wanting to talk to you about Gypsy Rose. Yes, obviously. our queen. But and the also, D is fire. The D is fire. Come get it, baby. Everyone's hating on them. I love their relationship because it was such a nice. It was such a nice. Um. What's the word for it? Stop. Contrast? It was such a nice, yeah, contrast to Simone and Jonathan. Because, you know, Simone, for those that don't know, Simone Biles right. went on a podcast with her husband, Jonathan Owens, who I literally figured out his name from that podcast. And he was like, huh, I'm the catch. I mean, she drove 45 minutes to see me. Like, the real question is, how'd she pull me? And everyone was like. What? I didn't watch it. Oh, I just heard about it. I he, And the crazy part is, like, I went to a state school and he acted like all of the football players with like inflated egos. I was like, I know exactly your type. I know exactly who you are. Yeah. And it but was just she's like, an Olympic champion. Yeah. And they met on Raya and he was like, yeah. That was I your like, first mistake. Yeah. He was like, I'd never heard of her in my life. Well, and he's an athlete. Yeah. And we were like, she is no. literally the most decorated gymnast in the world. What? Like actually, no, like actually, no, like, like that's actually. not, that's not a, yeah. Like I think you say name a gymnast gun to yeah. my head. I'm saying Simone Biles. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. And she was just like, but the whole time she's like cheesing ear to ear. She's like, stop. And I was like, oh, Damn, you know, that, that sucks. Oof. She's in the trap. But it was nice because then I see a interview with Gypsy and her man. And he's she's like, got him wrapped around her finger. And he's like, so many girls wanted her while she was in prison. And I'm lucky enough. And he was like, tell him, babe, tell him how many guys wanted to like date you while you were in prison. And I was like, it was like 200 no. something. Yeah. right? And I was like, I know that's right. Like, I am so sick of men being haters of their girlfriends. Especially right. when they're like, the girlfriends are more successful. Like, be happy. Well, I also you bagged a baddie. Yeah, you bagged a baddie. And also just like completely separate from the whole Simone thing, like Gypsy and in general. I also, it's quite refreshing to see her like have fun, talk about Taylor Swift, like go yeah. on this press tour and like be so open and happy about seeing her man and just be like happy about freedom and like not like um, letting it like affect her. Like maybe behind closed doors she's like, 
dealing with her own thing but i think it's just so refreshing that she has such a great attitude and she's just she's not dwelling on like how long she was there she was just like yeah. i'm out and i'm gonna continue my life now and like yeah. i think she could stick around for a really long time if she continues to let her personality shine like that yeah it's shocking because i feel like for a lot of people once they leave prison they're like traumatized right and that's what i'm like, saying they don't feel free right and it really seems like she's embracing this new lifestyle yeah. and this new fame and i'm like go off and her like i don't i think she might she had to have hired a stylist or something or maybe she's just a fashionable girly but you see oh, I she left she the had the dior bag she really was, oh, she was getting out of the suburban in new york city it was everything she is she's living her moment she's doing her big one okay yes, here's ma'am. my next question yes, what do you ma'am. think her first brand deal is gonna be who's it gonna be with Holy fuck. let's I both guess gypsy rose's first brand deal is going to be let me let me let me give this a solid try here you got one or think think i'm think thinking of one I could see her doing an extremely camp um, partnership with Paper Magazine and Google. They do that. Oh, I could that s- would be so they, good. Paper Magazine and Google, they'll like get really niche people and like I, like really iconic niche people. Oh, okay. And um, I think she'd be good for Paper Magazine um, as her first magazine cover. I could see her doing, um, honestly, like Calvin Klein. Okay. If they back like that Gypsy, big billboard in Soho, the big the big billboard in Soho, her just like feeling herself, mm. like her and her boyfriend though, oh. yeah, like I think her relationship's oh God, gonna blow up. Undies. Yeah, he's in undies. She's in the whole like get. I could see Calvin Klein slaying them. Yes. I could also see her doing like I could see her doing like like a prison chic Prada campaign. <laughs> oh, I can see Balenciaga doing that. Yes. Yeah, but then. They'll get canceled again easily. Like yeah. I don't, I don't see them doing. She seems very brand safe. Yeah, I think she's gonna do Savage. Savage oh, Fenty. Okay. I think she's gonna do Skims. A hundred. Oh, a hundred percent. Hundred percent gonna have a Skims campaign, and then the men Skims, obviously for her, her man's gonna be yeah, in it. Duh. I hope she wears that like nipple bra. Was that weird of me to say? Anyways, <laughs> um, she would look great. No, I can see her doing like. She could, she's probably gonna do like Elf. Elf, maybe I think like she, um, she's gonna do like a wide like Maybelline like I don't know like a like a major drugstore makeup campaign for like Revlon. Like, I can see like, her and Meg doing like a Revlon campaign together. I could also see her doing. I love this segment, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I could see her doing um, directing her own movie about her life. Oh yeah, I feel like. Isn't that probably already happening right now? There's a documentary. Well, there's a documentary, out. but like like a new version of the like you remember the app on Hulu? Yeah. Like I think they're instead of doing a show, like they would just do like a movie, but it would be like Gypsy like writing and telling the story up from her side. It, this is fun. That, talk that about was eligible great. for commission. No, talk about <laughs> eligible for commission. Yeah. Gypsy Rose Blanchard, if you're listening and you're ever in Los Angeles, you are more than welcome come to come on, on our, our podcast. podcast. You're we invited. won't ask you any intrusive questions and we'll send you them before, seriously. Yeah, we'll be really cool. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I think it's time to talk about GERD. Please. Like, can you been... explain it? Because I really don't know what it is. Gastroesophageal eruption reduction. It's like excess acid, like, but like, like a really intense heartburn. And like, like my food, like sometimes like I can't like burp. So Have like. you always had that? No. It started in New York. So I don't know if it was the food there or something with my, one of my medications. Um, but I've had it. Ever since New York, um, I went to the doctor once. They said it was like I had like a hernia in my stomach because like all the throwing up from drinking. Mm. So I have to like get that fixed with a surgery or something. But like, I don't feel like getting cut open <sighs> at all. Not today. At all. Wait, so you can't burp? That's sometimes. Sucks. It, it, like I have to like, like if I eat a big meal, no, I can't. But I have to like eat like in small portions, and then I can. Uh, like Pepsi helps, Prilosec helps, but it's like more pills. Yeah. Does it hurt your stomach? It's just annoying. It feels like like there's like like air trapped in me. Does it make you gassy? Mm, no. Okay. So if like a guy's sleeping over, you don't have to worry about that. Or you sleep. Well, if I'm place? like sitting over there, like trying to burp, like. <laughs> Wait. So you can't really perform fellage. I totally can. Oh. Yeah, not a problem. One of my okay. specialties, actually. Yeah, no, but like hot girls, most of us, we do have stomach problems. Yeah. In one way or another. I'm, like, really constipated. Yeah? Yeah. But, like, don't tell anyone. But okay. it's, like, a it's 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 tough. Um, it's something that affects my everyday life. 
we're doing things to fix it, but right, people don't get it. Yeah, like it actually ruins my day. Gerd can ruin my day sometimes, especially if like I ate a, like a large meal before going out. I, like I won't be able to enjoy my oh, my, my night God. if yeah. I'm like. That's tough. It's just like it doesn't. I don't enjoy it. I mean, I guess I'll deep dive into it sometime soon. But, You're a hot um, girl. For now, I'm just like you know clean eating and like doing my portions, so I'm like not in hell. Do you have to have a different diet? Yeah. I mean, like, my diet's very different from what it, what it was in New York. Right. Like, I make a lot of ground beef and jasmine rice, and, like, that's pretty much all I'm eating right now. Um, mm. It's fab. Put some sriracha on it. Sometimes I'll have, like, a little side of chips with it, like chips and mm. salsa. All right. Um, or I'll, like, make it into, like, a flour tortilla. There's a lot of things you could do. Like once hey, you like you're a make, chef. make no, literally, because now I have a kitchen and it's like, whoa, yeah. who let me have this power? Now the world's like, <laughs> literally. Next thing you know, I'm cooking meth. Like, what? what? Um, what's like the weirdest diet you've ever done? Anorexia. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You don't want me to be open about that? No, that's really real. Um, that's the first time I want to. That's probably the first time what our viewers have gone. Oh, that's not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking about it. I had no, it from it's such a girl. I had it really it's badly horrible. from 2017 to 2019, 2020. I would say, like, I just wouldn't you eat. Just didn't eat. I just didn't eat. Like, what did you eat every day? Like, I would have like a handful of like um, chocolate covered almonds. Oh but gosh. I was like sick. I like I realized that like now looking back, and I think that's also like. Not to go back to glitter and poncho again, yeah. I think like all of that came to a fast halt once I got sober mm -hmm. because like my body was just like needing food so yeah. badly that I just like it was more important to me than like looking skinny. So I just like I felt like all the food that I should have eaten those past three yeah. years I <laughs> ate in one year. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And um, it was very, very like difficult to watch myself go from like, really skinny to like essentially i was i was my bmi was overweight but that doesn't mean anything oh my it's gosh like, you know but it was like i i didn't like the way that i felt or looked or like anything so right now i'm at a happy steady medium um and i am a good average queen right now but love it takes time to get there takes time let me tell you i mean that might that might have been dark but like you know what uh, us girls we suffer with this it's so hard. It is. Eating and existing as a girl. Yeah. What's a crazy diet you've done? Um, a crazy diet I've done is similar to yours. All I ate was like egg whites and a chip a day for a really long time. Mm. It's like the Vogue Didn't diet. Didn't do a lot. Yeah. But um, it's so funny that you just said BMI though because I like recently had a video about like not just like being six feet or something like go viral okay and so many men have dm me being like your bmi is 27 you're overweight and i was like damn i feel like i'm in sixth grade again that's crazy it's just funny that you wow. said that yeah i'm like thank you for letting me know yeah but it's so crazy like these dms i'm getting from these men like do not affect me that's good. Cause like the that way would, it... that would honestly break me to shambles. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and I've been called the worst things I've been on the internet for fourteen years. Yeah, that shocks me. I when for me like if it's, I mean I'm not I would not really be broken to shambles, but like for some reason that's like the one thing I still have like trouble with, and I don't receive them that often, so it's rare. Like, but if I'll get like a. DM or a comment that's like, oh, she gained weight. When I do see that, for some reason, that has like a soft spot with me and that's something that's like personal, but you can literally spit on me, call me a me, call me anything, mm. call me a man, I don't care. Oh, wow. But it's like, you tell me I'm overweight. And that's just something, like, I personally don't view you as overweight. I don't view most overweight. Like, I don't see people's weight like that. I don't, yeah. but I only see myself as that. It's so weird. It is so weird. I feel like we all have that one comment that like we're just like oh you didn't have to go there but like you know when you see parents with a kid and the kids having like a temper tantrum and they're crying and you're like oh my god jesus like i'm glad that's not me like that's how i view the trolls like right. a, like a baby and like people are like trying to like calm the baby down and i'm just like oh my gosh yeah. like, that's a mess that, that is a mess and like i know I, I just hate being like 
I don't know. It's just for me. It's just like the one thing that I guess would uh, trigger me. I'm like a lot of people I, have been calling me a man lately. <laughs> well, that's that's <laughs> technically my fault. But um, yeah, no, I'll be like at a stoplight and I'll like push the button. And it'll be like wait, and I'm like, what about it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what about it? And, and yeah, and <laughs> oh, that's not. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna continue uh, on to the part of this show where we answer your deep, dark questions and uh, give you some advice. I think I got a fissure. What the f do I do at Kate? Okay. <laughs> no, because I'm glad that more people know what fissures are now. Yeah, we're Because I had no educating. idea what it was until it happened to me. Yeah? Yeah. Till it happens to you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're education station over here. Because uh, people know what a hemorrhoid is. They don't know what a fissure is. Mm -mm. And it's a cut on your butthole. Get the cream, sis. Wait till they fissure that out. <laughs> Get the cream, sis. Um... Get the cream, sis. Okay. How do you... Oh, I like this one. I feel like you have more experience in this. Uh, how do I tell my best friend that her boyfriend is a piece of shit? Oh, Lord. Here's the thing. You can't. Um, what? Really? So, at the end of the day, your friend is a grown-ass woman, and I've had this happen twice. Um, if she asks you your opinion, right. you can tell her. Unless it's like he's egregiously horrendous right right which like listen my friend dated this guy who literally was like so obsessed with gay people it was so weird and like it's he... like dave chappelle with trans no literally <laughs> like uh, who hurt you who like they talk about they are so obsessed with the lgbt's like the teens. they like he would see two guys like, walk on the street holding their hands. He'd be like, ha, you think they're going to have sex later? Like, in, a, like, a mean way. And I was like, I don't know, dude. Like, what? And he would, like, you always say stuff like probably want to join. You no, literally. He was like, oh, what do you think it would be like? Uh, and I'm just like, all right, oh, you need God. to stop. But anyways, unless she asks you, or if you want to have an intervention with her, be prepared to perhaps lose a friend because right. these girls stay picking their horrendous boyfriend. Well, I was going to say, I hope one of Simone Biles' friends is watching right now. Uh, please. Um, <laughs> oh, please. Uh, oh, please. <laughs> okay. I need advice on growing up in the church and being gay. There, you're always going to have haters inside the church. Like, that's just, unfortunately, yeah. the reality. Everyone has their own little version of their religion in their mind. And I didn't, I wasn't ra raised religiously, but I would feel, I would safely say that, like, I was surrounded with a lot of conservatives yeah. in my town growing up. And um, a lot of people did not like the way that I lived my life, even as a child. Like, even because I took dance class or even because I did some one thing out of the regular mold. Because mm -hmm. I didn't skateboard, because I didn't play baseball, because I didn't do all those things. Like, it was, mm -hmm. you're always going to have a hater. And it's like, do you want to hide and go back into that mold? Or do you want to flash it in their face? Because I choose flash it in their face any day. Yeah. I mean, I grew up Greek Orthodox. and Shit. Yeah, they... Yanni! They, yeah, they're pretty homophobic. But it depends on, like, the church. Um, but I will say, I mean, love the faith. But I'd say, like, I have gay friends that grew up religious. And they found their community. It just took time. Like, you will find, like, a group of people... Like, in the church who do accept you, and it's just, like, it just makes no sense to me when people pick and choose, like, the parts of the religion that they want to follow. Right. And then they, they're, like, oh, yeah. So. You said it. Find your people. Find your tribe. Um, yeah, just, like, look for the people that, like, represent you. And yeah. And. They're out there. They're out there. They may not, they may not be in your town, but they're online. Yeah. Like, a good little Zoom sesh. Mm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. My balls really stink and keep getting stuck to my leg. Please help. I don't know. Fucking body type. wash, you yeah. dog. Or get SRS. Next. Wait, that was a real <laughs> question. Do you know what SRS is? Wait, no, what's SRS? Sexual reassignment surgery? <laughs> <laughs> Noted. It's like if you're complaining about your balls, cut them off. Please. Or like figure it out, wash them. A drop of water goes a long way. No. Nary a drop. <laughs> like, my best friend had FaceTime sex with her boyfriend on my bed and then made me sleep in it that night. 
Did she like squirt? I don't know. Wash your sheets, girl. I'm trying to think though. I'd be like, what? Can you not? Like, must you? Must you have <laughs> FT sex in my BED? Like, is it that? Are you that horny? Like, relax. Sometimes. Like, go on the couch. Squirt on the couch. I'm mad. The common area. Squirt better on the than com- where I reside and slumber. Well, she should have washed her sheets and put your bed back together for you if she squirted. And she probably did. Nasty. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tale as old as time. How do I stop being in love with a man who literally doesn't care if I live or die? <sighs> who should go first? Because we. I, no, I, d- I, I can't give an answer because I think it's a experience of. Insanity and womanhood at the same time. I mean, that's why part of the reason I'm celibate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you do it? I, I just I I feel like we should just skip over it. We've we've done this nary nary too much. Yeah. Stop romanticizing. Okay, that's all I got. Girl, I'm going to college as a virgin. Advice? Because me and you both lost our virginities like relatively late to most people yeah i, I was mine eight, at 19 18 for me yeah so when i didn't I went go to, to college, college though so i don't have advice on this so go well i went to college my entire freshman year i was a virgin um okay my first time was actually horrible uh so i As think everyone's is. yeah the first time's like always gonna be trash it's like what do you gonna think you're s- gonna bust like yeah, no no you're gonna be awkward and miserable your heads are gonna clank you're gonna like say some shit you regret yeah but i'm not saying to just like get it over with i would suggest doing it with someone that you trust um really i I, i'm the opposite oh you're like just a rando yeah okay why or like someone that you like kind of like you that'll fuck you up oh you'll be like in love with them i learned the hard way oh yeah you do it with someone you trust, and then they leave you. The person who took your virginity and you first fell in love with, oh, my God. I couldn't get over it for years. Years. And you know what's crazy? I lost my virginity in my first love, and he took me two years to get over him. Took me literally two, three years to, like, look at another. I, it was brutal. But I feel like no matter what, your first heartbreak is going to take you two years it, to get yes, over. Yes, and that's what I've learned because I've had plenty of people come in and out, run through me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like yes. Yeah, well, yes. Um, no, it's just it's never the same as your first love. My advice is not to do it with someone that you really love. But like, honestly, just never have sex. Me. And yes, like yeah, just like know that if it is with someone you like, we're here for you. If it's someone you don't like, we're here for you. Everyone's had that experience. Right. Either way, just like try not to be drunk when you do it. Cause I was wasted. I was fucking. Oh my god, me too. Yeah, um, wow, I literally don't remember half of it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's like always gonna be bad and awkward. I don't know yeah. anyone with a good first time. Yeah. So and good it's, luck. It, yeah, it's not the way it is in movies at all. Like you're no. Yeah, no, it's not beautiful. It's not cute. Nothing beautiful. And like the breath is probably gonna be bad. I don't know. Just assume. Yeah. Well, wow, I, that was our advice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we've resumed after our week long break. It was so relaxing, but like I missed it. I'm I missed it too. I was very excited to get back in today. And I think that like us being back every week is gonna pick my ass up. Mm-hmm. Um we're in the new year. I got new management. We we got reached out to by some fun people. So exciting. Um we got some great things on uh the up and coming for y'all. So I think I'm just very excited about this new year. There's something electric about twenty twenty four, in my opinion. I agree. I think that there's there's some real there's some realness in this year so far. <laughs> you can say you that know? Again. What are you grateful for? Grateful to be back and I guess this week I'm really grateful to not have FOMO anymore i've really noticed that about myself lately like i have no fun I'm, i think i'm starting to I'm not seeing, have it either I'm seeing that for you right yeah it because i skipped the golden globes after party to be in my bed yeah that really shocked me trevi really like, that, that i was aghast um so a gas x i was a gas x i was bewildered um yeah not having fomo is a great life it's a great life wow and i is love you really? yeah that's it Okay, I interrupted you again, so finish that. <laughs> well, I'm saying I love you. <laughs> okay, I love you. I literally love you, too. Um, Let's wrap this shit up. Don't forget, motherfuckers, to show a friend or three or seven. Please. Because we, come on. The more people, the more resources we can have, and the bigger and better this show can become. We love you guys. And love you. Um, follow our socials. They're in the description. 
and we'll see you next week.